I sit and look at my future ex-wife, Laura, and my asshole best friend. We have been married for 25 years. Robert and I have been friends for 23 years. My ex-best friend became a total shit the moment he first started cheating with my wife. Listen, Steve, you don't need that gun, Bob said. Whatever it is, we can discuss it rationally. You have nothing to fear from me. Please take your finger off the trigger. My clock 45 lay flat on the armrest of my chair, my finger resting on the trigger. I don't think it will be good for my health. After all, you outweigh me by 60 pounds 6 inches taller. I saw pictures in your house with your Navy SEAL buddies. You can break my neck in about 20 seconds. No, thanks. I think we'd better sit here until Carol comes. She dropped your youngest off at softball practice and will be here soon. Listen, Steve said my cheating wife, Laura, I don't know what you think is going on. I demand that you stop this right now, or I will. What will you do, Laura? I wave the pistol. If you stand up, I'll start shooting. And if you get up, Bob, I will also start shooting. Why don't we just sit here in silence? And while we're at it, I bet that if you two really think about it, maybe you can find in the depth of your pieces, Ed Brains, what it all means. Now why don't we sit here and play a quit game? The first one to tell everything will remain intact, and the other will be finished. The two sat stunned. I just stared at them as they started sweating and squirming back and forth on the couch. I began to remember better days when Laura and I first met. Fuck this. Who cares? What's important now is one small comment a few months ago that got me thinking. Carol and Bob were at a barbecue on Saturday afternoon when Laura came over with a couple of cold beers. She handed them to use and said, for my husband's I spit the beer out of my nose when she said that. Bob just grinned. What was it? I asked. Steve, I have three husbands quickly recovering. She giggled and said, I have a husband at work, a husband at the car depot, and a husband whom I really love. It's you, Steve. I laughed and she kissed me running her tongue down my throat. She had never done this before. My stomach nodded. I started paying attention to the two of them and nothing. I mean, I didn't see anything unusual. I started checking security systems and records in the cloud. I pulled out years of archival records stored in the archives and nothing. Could they have done this years before we had CCTV cameras but she said, husbands as if she meant the real thing. Over the next few months, I went through phone logs and all the emails on her computer and own going back to last year, nothing. I knew they both worked in a government office where there were CCTV cameras everywhere. There was nothing they could do to avoid getting caught. I checked the credit card receipts I had saved for years, and again, nothing. It seemed like they were only together in the car. They never left early or in different cars to go to work. They only traveled alone when one of them was sick, or to family events or on vacation. They were always home at the allotted time. The only time they returned home late at night was when they got stuck in heavy traffic due to an accident. An hour 15 minutes give or take every day. They never went to conferences or seminars perhaps my instincts let me down. That was until Bob came in six weeks ago, and then my oldest son, Eric, they both left at the same time. That's when I noticed that they both had the same build in the back. I went online and ordered at-home DNA test kits for my children, Eric Todd, and my youngest Anne. I asked them not to tell their mother anything. I wanted to surprise her for her birthday. Carol came into the house. Surprise! Happy birthday, Laura! I shouted. Carol tossed three plain vanilla envelopes onto the coffee table in front of them. What is this? Laura asked. Carol and I want you two to open them and read them. Then I'll tell you. Oh, damn, I think they're self-explanatory. I snorted. They slowly reached out and opened each one. Laura turned pale at first glance. Robert vomited into a basket by the sofa. She grabbed the other two read them and cried. I'm so sorry, Steve. I never wanted to do this to you. I thought they were yours. I guess I miscalculated the timing of when I was fertile. Robert came to his senses and began to beg. She promised me that she would be safe. I would never cuckold my best friend. 
We want best friend I bet you both enjoyed making Carol and I look like fools. I'm not gonna shoot you or try to fire you from your job. We are going to divorce you. If I fired you, Laura, I would have to pay you child support. I will keep my pension, and you will keep yours. We will divide everything else in half. I took all our investments and put them into Anne's college trust fund. I cancelled all joint credit accounts after I paid them off. I took half the remaining money and put it in a separate bank account. We will put the house up for sale. All the pleasant memories I had of this place were nothing more than a facade. I have already rented an apartment on the other side of the city as far away from you two as possible. This morning, I told the children that I am not their father, but just a stupid man who was used by you two. I don't think they're very happy with you and says she will move in with me when she finishes school in two months. She doesn't want to talk to you, Laura, I haven't said a single disparaging word about you, so you'll have to give her time. Please, Steve, Laura begged. I love you. I always have and always will. I just made a mistake in my cycle. I chuckled and shook my head. Laura, I don't think you really believe the bullshit you're trying to sell me. There's an old saying in the Bronx, shit has a sound of its own. I really love you. I wanna grow old with our grandchildren and watch them be born. She cried. Trying not to shoot at her, I answered, Laura, there's one problem. You and I will not have children for you to look at. As it turns out, I will never have our grandchildren to look up to. You can watch them with Bob. She started crying again and said, I'm so sorry. I never wanted to do this to you. I looked at Bob and tears started running down his cheek. He tried to wipe them off before they fell into his lap. Carol came over and began to reassure. Bob, I talked to all your former SEAL team members and told them how you betrayed your naval code of conduct, not military law, but a code of relations between the Marines themselves. I told them how you had sex with your best friend's wife and betrayed him and me for the last 23 years. The email says you are persona non grata to them. I'm sure they will call you personally. As far as you and I are concerned, it's all over between us. Now I don't have to do housework. I will receive alimony for the rest of my life or until I get married again. You know, I will never marry again. I'll just bring men to my house and have sex with them in a bed that you pay for. I've already asked my lawyer to block our financial accounts. We will receive benefits until the divorce is finalized. I'm going to take everything we have. I'm sure my lawyer will crucify you both for what you two did to us. And I will make sure that I play my role in front of the jury as the wronged wife who wasted 23 years of her life on you. The good news is that I sent the DNA information to your parents, Bob. They are thrilled to have three more grandchildren. But, Laura, I can't say the same about Steve's family. They were absolutely heartbroken that they would never have grandchildren. Laura slid off the sofa crying in despair. I waved the gun at Bob. Help her up. Bob, put her back on the sofa. He took her in his arms and sat down next to her, holding her so that she wouldn't slip back to the floor. A man entered the room and asked, Are you, Mr. Robert Watkins? Yes, Bob answered. You've been served. He turned to Laura, Mrs. Laura Foster. She just shook her head. He placed the envelope on her lap and took a photo. You have been served. He turned and walked away. Bob, Carol said, this package contains a restraining order against you. You have two hours to pack your things and get out of the house. I'm not afraid of you as such, but I don't want to deal with you. I'll have it removed so you can see the children. Think you can move in with Laura. Laura, I want you to go away for the weekend. I'll finish packing and leave on Sunday morning, and you can go home. I told her, damn it. Just think, you could let Bob move in and you could share everything, not just a ride to work. Laura burst into tears again. Okay, Bob, we give up. Bob looked confused by the statement. I continued to explain Carol and I were wondering how you two got away with this for so long. Well, at least until the day she called you one of her husbands. Since it doesn't matter anymore. Tell us how you two cuckolded me all these years. Bob sighed and slowly shook his head and said, in the car while we were driving back and forth to work. Carol and I looked at each other in disbelief, like this, he said, in the car, 
never anywhere else. When did it start? About a year after we started traveling together, we both had stress after a working day, and we figured out how to relieve it. Did you need to relieve stress after a hard day at the office and fighting traffic jams? Do you remember that week when I left to take care of my sick sister? You begged me to come home because you were going crazy, and this was just a week later. Laura, what about poor Steve? He was cooking dinner and making sure the house was in order, and the kids had their homework done by the time you got home. You know, Steve, maybe we should have had an affair since we were under pressure to always take care of everything by the time they got home. Carol asked Bob you insisted on buying a van, so that's why you wanted this. Well, Bob, I think you two will get up and leave now. As for me, I never wanna see you again. You and Carol have children, so I guess you two still have children to raise. I will no longer attend family gatherings since you and Carol have children, and you and Laura have children together. This will make the party interesting without me. Bob looked at me and said, Steve, I'm sorry that I was your children's biological donor, but you are their real father. Somehow this doesn't make me feel better. Now you two leave. Laura, you can come back on Sunday. Carol helped me pack your bag for the night and your parents are waiting for you. I was sitting in my chair drinking my Jack and Coke when I felt soft hands rubbing my shoulders. You have so much tension in your shoulders, she said, leaning over me and whispering in my ear. I wanna take it all off. Pressure, how about a little revenge sex? The divorces passed and Bob moved in with Laura. It didn't last long. It's interesting that they stopped driving. I continued to see Carol. Subscribe to our channel so that your second half doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story. Because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.